I'm going to remain anonymous for this, but just wanted to say that I've had my hand in working for several large, reputable, well-known politicians and other government bodies. I'm here to tell you that they all know about this stuff and what's really going on. I'm not saying all of them are exactly in on it, but I'm saying that there is a lot of inside baseball and political maneuvering. That's why we have all these different factions, to keep people confused so the truth will never come out. Or if it does, you're only getting fractions mixed with misinformation. Let me just give you some examples. There is a notable person who was a chairman of a recent person's campaign, and yes, I am purposely being vague. She is a member of the Council of Foreign Relations, which has been around for many years now. And as you know, they're all about globalization. They want to merge us into one ruling world government with no borders so that corporations can roam free across the globe with no regulation or oversight from any elected officials. Now, I'm not sure how much time you have, but I wanted to tell you what I know because this thing scares me badly. When I worked in DC, we had a lot of people come through my office who were whistleblowers, uh, military personnel, law enforcement, and some very high-level government officials. People who, what I call, work on the back end. You know, you never see their faces, hear their name, but they're the ones pulling a lot of the strings of the public puppets you see now. They all had the same story to tell. I don't know how up to speed you are on what's going on, but essentially, there is a group of people who are very powerful, and they have been doing this for a long time. But I never heard them called the Cabal until you started talking more about it. Even some of my friends in law enforcement can't really talk too much about it and what they know. But some of these things need to be said. In fact, a friend of mine who works in the FBI had been told not to investigate specific pedophile rings because it was off limits. And if they did, they would face losing their job, prosecution, or worse. This stuff goes way back into history where kings would surround themselves with young boys. Also, the reptilian thing, that's also this whole other thing to unpack that would need its own email. Actually, probably a book. But what I can tell you is there are many different types of aliens. The reptilian stuff is real and they've been here for a long time. I also have a close friend who's an attorney in Texas who's worked with some very big names in the political spectrum. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to these people, their history and their actions. This particular political couple was a part of a group that were running guns from Libya through Turkey into Syria. This was back in 2011, right before these large Arab protests. Word was kept hush-hush because if word got out that Americans were involved, then this couple could have faced massive charges of treason, so on and so on. So, they had their lawyers come up with this idea where they would send American arms dealers as consultants under contract to the Libyan government, but they were really working for the CIA, and then these consultants would hire other people to send guns into Syria. The thing is, if this couple knew that if anyone found out about this, then they could be in a lot of trouble. So they came up with another plan where they had hired some foreign companies owned by Americans who didn't care about risking anything. They just sent American arms over there and got paid for it. I also have other friends who work in DC specifically as an attorney, and they can even begin to unravel all the cover-ups that are happening. It's very, very real. One time, I was also at a meeting at the White House when Obama walked out from behind his desk after we finished talking about something else entirely unrelated to UFOs or aliens or any of that stuff. And I thought this was interesting that he brought this up completely unannounced. He said, you know, one day we're going to have to tell the people about the UFO incidents. Then he laughed like it was some kind of joke, but nobody else did because everybody knew he wasn't kidding around. I was also surrounded by about six other people when we were having this discussion. Another friend of mine used to work as an aide for Senator John McCain back during his presidential campaign in 2008, so this friend of mine saw him nearly every day through his college years. He once told me that while sitting in his office, 
he had seen a UFO once while flying over the Phoenix area, and that it was all real. That, supposedly, McCain had access to deeply classified documents where it goes in depth on what these beings were, what they looked like, how they communicated, the technology they used, etc. He would also go into detail about enormous triangle lights and the perimeter of each side, and it just goes really in depth from there. Of course, from my understanding, none of this stuff was ever documented, at least nothing the public will ever see. Anyway, I know at this point this email is kind of turning into a jarbled mess, so I'm just going to go ahead and end it for now, but I have many more to send you on a lot more information that I think you would find very interesting. Stay safe. I worked on a bioengineering project back in the early 1990s as a subcontractor for the military. I was not privy to the entire project, but I did work on some of the genetic aspects. The goal was to create a super soldier that could be inserted into enemy territory and survive with extended periods of time with virtually little to no support. There were also other projects doing similar things at the time, and we were far from the only project pursuing this goal, not to mention country. As far as I'm aware of, there were almost 100 other countries at the time pursuing this same goal, and as far as I understood, none of them had ever stopped. In fact, there is far more that goes on in the underworld, as I like to call it, which is a world that the public will never know about. A world that only the government and the most secret recesses and the military know about and actively pursue. Anyway, the project that I worked on for the short time was successful, and the results were far better than anyone had hoped. They had contracted some of the best biologists and scientists at the time, at least so they thought, because these first generation of soldiers showed no signs of defects or negative side effects, and they performed beyond all expectations, but this was the alpha phase. We began working on a second generation in development, when the project was suddenly shut down. This was right around the same time as the Gulf War, or as many people know it, Project Desert Storm. I could only assume at the time that that was part of the reason. The other part being that they had wanted to move all their testing overseas into very remote locations in the Congo, Kuwait, and even India. The soldiers themselves were actually human embryos spliced with various animal DNA to create the perfect obedient soldier. Now this has been going on before this project ever even was conceived, and as far as I'm aware, is continuing on to this very day. I'd also like to point out to you that the government and military have technology that far surpasses anything you could ever even begin to conceive or understand, far beyond what the general public will ever have access or knowledge of. In addition to that, the general public actually gets the majority of misinformation. They are repeatedly told that we don't have access to certain things or, in terms of science, certain things are impossible. But you see, the military and government operate in a much different way than what many would consider morally ethical. I'm not exactly proud of the work that I've done, but let's just say that when you're working for these projects, they're willing to cross any and every boundary, no matter how horrific, murderous, or disgusting it might be, because to these people, the ends justify the means. Please understand that in me writing this, I have to stay anonymous. I live in a small house on five acres of land, which is surrounded by woods. The closest neighbor is over half a mile away. My property has what's called an easement to the back that goes to a neighboring farm. But other than that, there are no neighbors around me for at least three miles. I've lived here for about four years now, and I've always been fascinated with the paranormal or supernatural world. I grew up hearing stories from my father about his experiences out hunting or fishing, and I've always been a bit of a believer. I've had an encounter with what I believe to be a skinwalker. 
but it wasn't aggressive at all. It's hard to explain, but here it goes. So, two months ago, my dogs start acting weird around dusk time. They'd both start growling and pacing back and forth in front of our large sliding glass door, and this door faces west. They'd do this for roughly 10 minutes. Then, they'd go back to the door and start barking. So I'd let them out, and they'd run down the driveway and into the woods behind our house. Now, a few days of this behavior, I started going outside with my dogs when it happened, so I could watch what was causing their reaction. This is where things get weird. I went out one night around 10 p.m. The dogs were doing their usual pacing in front of the glass door. They would go to the back door every once in a while, but they weren't barking as loudly as usual. I just figured this was because they could see me standing there watching them, so they didn't feel the need to bark much. Now after about 10 minutes of this behavior, my dog Tessa stopped pacing, started looking into the woods to my right. I could tell she was staring at something intently, but couldn't see what it was. She kept staring for about 30 seconds before turning back around and resuming her usual behavior of pacing in front of the door. I watched as she did this several more times over the next few minutes, then went inside again after letting them out one last time. The next night, they were doing their routine again, pacing in front of the glass door, going to the back door every once in a while, and barking louder than usual, then turning back around to continue pacing. But this time, they did not stop looking into the woods. They kept staring for a few minutes before resuming their usual behavior. I went outside again and watched as they did this several more times throughout the next 10 minutes or so. They went inside one last time. The third night was when I saw it. A small deer walked out of the woods about 50 or so feet from where my dogs were standing and began walking toward them at a slow pace. As soon as Tessa noticed it, she stopped her pacing, stared at it intently for about two minutes until it passed by us, and continued down our driveway into the field behind our house. After that, she resumed her normal behavior like nothing had happened. The same thing happened with my other dog, Leo. A few nights later, in exactly the same spot on our property, I know there are deer around here, but... There was something off about this one, its mannerisms, the way it looked to me, and more importantly, its eyes. I don't know, I've never got the creeps from a deer before, until this. Everything about it just screamed wrong. Now I've heard about skinwalkers and how they can disguise themselves as animals in order to lure people away, so maybe is that what happened? I couldn't help but feel a sense of beckoning like it was calling to me, wanting me to follow it. But I didn't. If it were a skinwalker, wouldn't my dogs have been acting more aggressive than usual? They definitely were acting strange, so I know dogs can pick up on things we can't. They did bark every once in a while when they saw it, but not nearly as much as they usually do when something startles them. Anyway, just food for thought. I live in the US, but grew up on a farm in rural Canada. I've spent my entire life in the country and have had many unusual experiences. This story is about a horrific encounter that happened in 2005 when I was just 30. I had moved to an apartment building near downtown Calgary, Alberta. It was just me living there at the time. My wife and kids were staying with her parents for a while as we sorted out some marital and financial issues. My work schedule allowed me plenty of free time during the day, so I would often take walks around town or go to one of the local parks after work, just to clear my head. I felt like staying in my place was just, it was bad news. One such park was Prince Islands Park, located right near around where I was. The island had been connected there for quite some time, but even today, it feels like its own little oasis amidst all the concrete surrounding it. Anyway, one afternoon, I was walking around when I came upon a group of people playing frisbee. One of them said hi to me and we started chatting about what they were doing there on the island that day. 
They told me it was their regular get-together spot. We talked for a little while longer, then parted ways. They went back to their game while I continued my walk around. After a few minutes, I decided to take another stroll along the Bow River path on the north side. As I walked down the trail, I noticed something strange ahead. There was a large tree directly across from where I stood with its branches hanging over in the river below. The branches appeared to be moving slightly, but not enough for any wind or other natural phenomenon to cause it, almost like someone was gently pushing them aside every so often as if trying to look out at something in the river below. It didn't make any sense because why would anyone want to spy on water? And who would hang out by a tree just randomly peering through its branches at water? This seemed odd enough, but things got even more strange after this. I heard singing, a woman's voice coming from behind me. My first thought was that some homeless lady had followed me onto this part of the trail because she wanted money or food or something else. But then again, how could she have possibly known which way I'd go next since I hadn't been looking back at her? Also, why would she wait until now before following me instead of immediately getting in front of me as soon as she saw which direction I headed off in? Something wasn't adding up here, but whatever. I continued pressing on forward towards the shaking branch when I see this black blur I would call it, come down from the tree and shoot right past me. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. It was like some hallucination or something. Instantly afterwards, I felt this cold brush of wind fill up all around me. It was like I was enveloped in winter. And then I would hear this faint singing from all around me. It was coming omnidirectionally, up, down, left, right. It didn't matter. I was surrounded by it. I felt lightheaded and dizzy, like I was about to fall over. I remember it feels like I blacked out at one point, because I could recall time lapses in my memory where I was walking on the path, I heard what I thought was a homeless lady singing behind me, the black blur came rushing at me, and then I remember sitting down on the ground next to the water, just kind of collecting myself and not really sure what had happened. I'd maybe sat there for about another hour or so until I decided it was time to head back. I felt weird the entire time, like I had problems remembering things. It was a very, very strange experience. I'm sorry this wasn't more spooky or maybe up the lines of what you were looking for, but this is a genuine experience that I've had that could or couldn't be with the paranormal, I'm not sure. Maybe you can make sense of it.